Chosen Seed Camp in the house. We're here to bring you a little edification today on this precious Shabbat day. Brother Shofar. Brother B. And uh, we're here to bring out some information concerning the, the feast days and the, the new moon and should we be following the moon or should we be following the sun. And, uh, <clears throat> it's it's kind of like a, you know, a new well, new, as far as I'm concerned, understanding that uh, we're supposed to be keeping the feast days according to the, uh, the, 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 the sun and how the sun brings, it brings in the months from month to month. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I came across the information a little over a month ago. Um, I read through the website that the information actually came from. You know, after I saw the video of the whole breakdown, and you know, I, I really did an in-depth um, study on the website, and you know, and, and where the information came from, and it, it had a lot of gaping holes in it. And so, um, before we decided that uh, personally here that we were going to change up the way we did things, you know, we always study things thoroughly, and uh, I guess we, you know, the one of the one of the key things to to new information is trying to debunk it to see if it's actually you know accurate or not and so that was one of the things that I personally tried to do and uh, I did succeed in it in, in uh, pretty much just showing that it's, it's just inaccurate and uh, there was a lot of information put out in the video um, like I said I really don't have nothing personal against you know the brother that put it out but I mean, right is right and truth is truth. The, uh, you know, in the video stated that, uh, that Antiochus, who, who uh, succeeded Alexander, um, and, and had to, you know, to pretty much rule over Jerusalem and then tried to fight, you know, had to, the, the fight with the Maccabees, which can be found in the Apocrypha, in uh, the Book of the Maccabees or whatever. It was said that, uh, that he started, you know, incorporated moon worship. And there was no uh, information to support that on, you know, it was stated that, uh, you know, it was said in Josephus and it was said in the Apocrypha. Now, both books do contain information about Antiochus and how he, you know, did fight with the, with the, uh, the Israelites, uh, the Maccabees at that time. But there was nothing stating, not even on, a, on the Internet, stating that he incorporated moon worship. And uh, as we are all well aware, the Greeks and the Romans are sun worshippers. They always have been sun worshippers. Um, so that, those were the two questions in my mind is where did this information come from? Because there was not anything on the site given other than just uh, an accountant, Josephus, that just mentioned the name of Antiochus, but not that he brought in moon worship at all. Um, also, it was stated in a, in a, a recent video that the, the sun set would uh, come at like five something in the afternoon and it didn't it didn't happen um, even if even if we were to post, supposed to have equal day and equal night on that on that particular day the sun did not set when it was when it was set to set um, it was stated that the the Jewish Masoretes were the ones who injected the moon into the scriptures and I found that to be false as well. There was no, um, no facts to support that information. Uh, what was it? it? Was oh yeah, and also there was it was stated that the you know the words new moon were like I said injected, and it was you know it really should be new month, and that that word kadesh really has nothing to do with the the word yiriak. Um, well, that 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 they translated into the word moon. So we're going to go through and break down the majority of all that. And, you know, I think it's going to be a, a pretty in-depth and thorough breakdown and hopefully uh, everyone is edified. So uh, first of all, we're going to look at three different words in the Strong's Concordance. Um, you had a word, uh, Kodesh, which is where, you know, they, they translate the word new moon from. And it's, uh, H2320. And uh, we'll have Brother Shofar is going to be 
read it for me today. <clears throat> H2320 Kadesh from 2318, the new moon, by implication, a month. Read that part again. Kadesh from 2318, the new moon, by implication, a month. By implication, a month. Do you, if, I mean, implication means it's implying that it's a month because the new moon has a monthly cycle. But it doesn't mean that it's the word month. That's, that's the whole key, you know, the wording there, by implication, a month. Okay, so you want to keep that word, like, right there. Keep it. Keep your finger on that one. Uh, now we're going to go to H3394. Keep your finger on that word. Th these three words are going to be key in, in this, uh, this first portion. H3394. Y'all reach from the same as 3391, the moon. The moon from the same as three three nine one. It's actually uh, Yiriach, Yiriach. So, um, but it says from the same as three three nine one. So grab three three nine one. Okay. H three three nine one Yerach. From an unused root of uncertain signification, a lunation, month, month and moon. So the month and moon or the lunar cycle. Is is this word, Yerach, Yeriach, and Kodesh, which uh, they get uh, new moon from, but it actually means like renew, to a, a renewing, in uh in the Hebrew. But uh, I'm going to show you how these words are all related to the moon. That's that's first and foremost. So let's let's go to the scriptures and grab Genesis 37 and 9. The book of Genesis, chapter 37 and verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance, ob obeisance to me. That's good. Uh, this, is, uh, this is Joseph telling his brothers and his father about his dream or whatever. But the sun and the moon, but this word here for moon is... Uh, is, is the word H3394 is the word Yiriach, which means moon, the same moon that the Most High created to be the lesser light in the evening. So now we're going to grab um, Isaiah 60 and 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 20. Your son shall no more go down. Neither shall your moon withdraw itself. That's good. But that your moon is the is H3391, Yurak, which which uh, the word Yuriak comes from. So it lets you know that they are actually related and they both uh, you know are, are the is the word moon in the Hebrew. Now let's go to uh, 2 Kings 15 and 13. There's to show you the relationship between the moon and a month and a monthly cycle. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 15 and verse 13. Shalom, the son of Yabesh, began to reign in the 9th and 30th year of Uzziah, king of Yahudah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. A full month. That word month in 2 Kings 15, 15 and 13 is the word Yerach. So we know it's not saying a full moon. He didn't reign for a full moon. He reigned a full month, and then he was then slaughtered. If you keep continue reading, he was then slaughtered, and then somebody else ruled in his stead. Just to prove this point even further, let's go to Exodus 2 and 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 2 and verse 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Three months. That word month there is the word Yerach. 3391. H3391. So she hid him for three months or for three moons or three lunar cycles. Let's go. And that, that, that would be proof enough. But I'm about to show you the, the, 
correlation between the word Yerat and the word Kodesh to show you how they're both related to the moon and the month. So let's go to uh, 1 Kings 6 and 38. <coughs> Book of 1 Kings, chapter 6 and verse 38. And in the 11th year, in the month bull. Let's stop right there. Now that word month right there is H3391, your rock. In the month bull, read. Which is the 8th month. Which is the, which is the 8th month. Now that word month is the word Kodesh, 2320. So it would read, and in the 11th year, in the moon bull which is the eighth new moon. So it's showing the correlation between the word Kodesh and the word and the word Yerach right there. Mm -hmm. Now even further, we're going to drive it home. Go to 1 Kings 8 and 2. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 2. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Shalom at the feast in the month Ethanim. In the month, that's the word Yerach, H3391. In the, in the month, Ethanim, read. Which is the seventh month. Which is the seventh month. And that word month is Chodesh, H2320. Now, I want to show you something real quick. Hold your finger there. Turn to Leviticus 23 and 24. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 24. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, mm -hmm. in the first day of the month, mm -hmm. shall you have a Shabbat, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Okay, just, to get, just for those who may not be familiar with when the Feast of Trumpets are, is, let's go back to 1 Kings 8 and 2. Because that's key right there, it's letting you know. In the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets, right? Read 8 and 2 again. Now we're going to get an in-depth understanding. 1 Kings 8 and 2. And all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto King Shalom at the feast in the month Ethanim. The feast in the moon Ethanim. So the feast in the, in the month Ethanim, read. Which is the seventh month. And that word month is the new moon. So what feast is in the new moon of the seventh month? <laughs> it's the Feast of Trumpets. Jesus Trumpets. See that? All right. Let's go to... Uh, so now that I've shown the relation between the word Kadesh and the word Uriak, which shows you that month and new moon, how they're, they're very closely related, and it's not just new month, but it actually has relationship with the moon, we're going to show you <clears throat> how the feast days are actually... Uh, they actually are according, you know, they follow the pattern of, of the moon. So let's go to Leviticus 23 and 4. And notice how I'm pulling a, a lot of these words, not just out of the Strong's Concordance, but with understanding of the Hebrew, because it's very key, not just to use the Strong's, but to, to, to un actually understand what you're reading, because the Strong's is not going to give you a very thorough breakdown. It'll give you the root, which can sometimes be misleading if you don't know what you're reading. Leviticus 23 and 4. These are the feasts of Yahuwah, even set apart convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Okay, that's fine. So that word right there for feast is the word H4150. Grab that one real quick. <clears throat> H4150. And these are the feasts. H4150. Zero. Moed or Moada. Fixed time or season. Specifically a festival. Conventionally a year by implication. An assembly. So that word Moed is actually an appointed time. And these are the appointed times of the Most High. Even set apart convocations which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Now, 